I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, the truth of an unknown interpreter follows the journey of a hard-of-hearing young man as he navigates his way through the hearing world, relying on interpreters to communicate and understand the world around him. The story, however, takes a dark turn when his first interpreter goes missing and is later found dead, leading him to encounter a sinister interpreter involved in a dangerous cult that performs human sacrifices. We're delighted to have the book's author, Paul Aramuni, on our Spotlight TV show here today. And we ask those watching to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel. Paul, thank you so much for being our guest. Hi, Logan. Thank you for having me. And I just wanted to say that you have probably explained my own book better than I have to other people. (laughs) Okay, awesome. I'm glad I was able to summarize it that well. Good. That's good. Well, I really enjoyed it. So I really understood it. It really connected with me. So uh, I think that's why I was able to encapsulate what it's all about so well. Where did you get the idea of creating this world of people who cannot hear and do hear? Um, It's obviously a real world. Some people around us have difficulty hearing or can't hear at all, but you don't see a lot of it on TV and you don't hear a lot of it in the media and you don't read a lot about it. How did you come about creating this world? Yeah, so um, I just wanted to say that, yes, um, uh, there the deaf and hard of hearing community is pretty vast and a lot of people, a lot of hearing people don't really, um, don't really support the deaf and hard of hearing community as much after like, well, I know there has been deaf and hard of hearing people for, since the earth was built to mate. But now in 2023, I'm sure 2022, companies and more people are starting to be more um more more welcoming of the deaf and hard of hearing community. Um so yeah, there so yes, now a lot of hard of hearing people are getting recognition, which is really good. But now to talk about my story of the book. Um, so I, as you already know, I am hard of hearing, um, I, in kindergarten to my whole elementary school life, I was in the deaf and hard of hearing program, which was a program essentially for deaf and hard of hearing kids. And I always, I, I've been pretty much raised with the deaf community through elementary school and middle school. I've had interpreters. It was really fun. I really enjoyed being, being born into that culture. I mean, nobody wishes they were hard of hearing or deaf, but some people are more, um, some people accept that, I guess, blessing. Some people take it as a blessing. Some people just take it as a curse or whatever. But I... Basically, it's being different. And whether you define that in good terms or bad terms is up to the individual. You have a, a different world, a different experience than most people. And that can be empowering or disempowering depending on how you look at it, I suppose, right? Yes, that's very true. Yeah. So when I was in elementary school and middle school, well, no, main, main, mainly um, elementary school, I've had really good interpreters. And then when I got to middle school, I had a good interpreter, but that's when I started getting a really um challenging chemistry with my other interpreters. Mm-hmm. Seventh grade, I, I had a not so great relationship with this interpreter and and I was at the point where I was like you know what I don't want to be associated with the deaf community anymore I, I I was on a contract that I had to have an interpreter and I thought if I moved to a hearing school there are schools assigned for deaf and hard hearing people I was supposed to go to one high school but I told my parents I wanted to go to a different route to be in a much more hearing environment so my mom said, okay, we can go, you, you can go to that school. And I thought after starting that journey, I was set, like I didn't have to worry about being near an interpreter and this and that. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Um, I, I I still had to get an interpreter. Um, I remember when I was going to my first day of, of first class in my ninth grade year, and I was sitting I, I I sat down with a group of students and everybody was just like talking and I just felt like relieved, like I was in a new world, just getting my stuff ready. And then the teacher was taking attendance. I was like waiting. And then a, a lady 
came in through the door. She was wearing a black suit and, and she looked so professional. Once she came in and once I started hearing those words out of her mouth before she even started, spoke, started speaking, I already knew it. I already knew that was an interpreter. And 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 when she called my name, I like the whole world just went dark for a second. And but fortunately enough, she was the best interpreter I've ever had in my life. We had great conversations, great chemistry. She was always there for me. Um, but sadly enough, when at the end of ninth grade, in, in the in a, the within the first week of tenth grade, not even halfway through the week, after she was talking to me about how my summer went, how our summer went, and then she gave me the news that she had to depart mm. from being my client because she had to go to a different client who recently just moved to the States from Italy and who needed her help more than I did, apparently. So um, so I had to get another interpreter. And this interpreter, it was back to middle school again and the worst experience ever. So after bearing with this interpreter for three years, I poured everything into a book and a lot of people like it. And yeah. Well, it's wonderful. It was a great taking like a bad scenario and amplifying it and stretching it and making it even more, you know, suspicious makes it uh, such a compelling story. How long did you did it take you to write it? How long did you work on the book? Uh, so, as you know, high schoolers, teenagers don't really have. I guess you could say they have a lot of time in their hands because they don't have responsibilities to look forward to, like a job, etc. I didn't have a job at the time. I was in eleventh grade or twelfth grade, maybe twelfth grade. And I, I remember going to school before before school started during lunch break and after school. I would go straight to the library and just spend hours typing, typing, typing and asking my friends for their opinions. And it was like a 24 hour nonstop just writing on my book because I really loved it. It was just mm -hmm. so much fun. Just a little bit better than video games when I was <laughs> obsessed with that. Um, so it took me seven months to write that book. Great. Well, it shows that you poured your heart out into it because it really flows. It's a great read. Tell the folks at home what the title, The Truth of the Unknown Interpreter, means. So The Truth of the Unknown Interpreter, um, I... I did not have too much time to, I mean, I didn't, it, it wasn't really that hard to come up with the title because I don't know. I just, I just thought it was the perfect one. I, I don't even mm. think there was any other titles I had in mind because, because the, because the truth of the unknown interpreter. So the, the truth and the unknown. Okay. So when I was in, when I was in um, when I was in kindergarten, all the way up to K to twelve, I had so many different experiences, so many different interpreters. Um, you never know what's gonna come through those doors, <laughs> like what interpreter you're gonna get. And it's, it's, I've had good interpreters, I've had bad interpreters. And in the beginning of the story, I was talking about how, and when I got my second interpreter after my favorite interpreter had left. And the other interpreter, I just felt this weird ominous vibe and how I was so dramatic in the story regarding this other interpreter coming in. That's how it felt because, I don't know, like what people sh represent themselves, you kind of can get the energy what they're going to give. And some it's, sometimes your intuitions are correct. So I, I didn't expect to have the... the not so fortunate last three years of my high school life and it was really I didn't like that I, and I wasn't expecting um I wasn't expecting um my my more favorable interpreter to just lead my high school career like that so oh uh, and the so that's the unknown part the truth is everybody in my hearing all of my hearing friends assumed that it was amazing to have an interpreter. So cool because you have a friend to talk to in class when the teacher's talking. You 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 have somebody to help you with your homework all the time. You have just someone to cope with when you're lonely. Yes, those are great benefits of having an interpreter. But 
every interpreter is human, of course, right. and they're not going to vibe with everyone. So I had some really good interpreters and some bad ones, and the bad ones were very bossy, this and that. And I just thought, and the reason why I wrote this book is because I did not... I did not like my interpreter so much that I created a fictional character just to just to let the interpreter know how much I do not like her. Mm-hmm. So instead of like taking my anger out in my interpreter in real life, well, I, I did like, you know, like backlash at her a little bit, but mm-hmm. she just kept threatening me with referrals and this, and I did not want to get in more trouble. So I just wrote a book. And and I, and one of my friends said, just make sure you don't put your, her name in it because you will get this too. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm not going to put her name in it. That's oh. funny. You know, when you think about it, there has to be such trust between the interpreter and client because you're depending on that person to accurately interpret the words said to you, the communication, right? Yes. Yeah. Now, I've got a question for you, and some of the folks at home might be wondering about this. Since you're used to using interpreters, how are you able to communicate today? Is it uh, written out for you, my questions, on your screen, or do you have cochlear implants? How do you happen to hear me today? Um, Well, um, I have have moderate to sensory neural hearing loss, Mm -hmm. which is, um, I'm not as hearing impaired as I could be, I'm I'm closer to the hearing level, but just not there yet. Well, mm-hmm. I don't think I can get to that point. But uh, my left ear is sixty four percent hearing. My right ear is eighty four percent hearing, so I could still hear pretty well. Um, technology has gotten so much better over the years. In the hearing aids, um, cochlear implants are for people who are in the much more lower. Mm-hmm. hearing level than I am because it's a much more powerful device it's surgically implanted in your head and but I'm fortunate enough to have hearing aids and thank god I didn't get worse um but so hearing aids definitely got a lot better I'm wearing much more better hearing aids I don't really like to tell the world that I'm hard of hearing mm-hmm. but I guess I guess oh, after like 23 years I had to live with the fact that I'm at hard of hearing <laughs> But yeah, um, I, I'm able to hear you perfectly fine. Because... Wonderful, wonderful. Well, we're glad you can. Now, has this unleashed a writing bug in you? Are you working on any other works right now? Um, well, I thought the first book was just going to be the end of my writing career. But after realizing how creative I am and how much fun it was and uh, the cool stuff, I decided to write a second book just jotting down stuff uh, that is going to be the sequel the prequel to my first book so there has been unfortunate in the first book there has been unfortunate series of events that happened with my favorite interpreter and other things that have led on the prequel is going to be the amazing chemistry that the protagonist had with the favorable interpreter leading up to the main book and i think that's really cool wonderful wonderful well the name of this book is the truth of an unknown interpreter it follows the story of a hard to hearing man who navigates his way through the hearing world and he relies on interpreters to navigate that world and then he comes across one that is absolutely sinister it's written by paul aramoni and we are delighted to have him here today on spotlight paul thank you for joining us thank you i'm glad to be here Our pleasure. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford thanking you for your time, this time, until next time, on Spotlight.